Hi, welcome to Layback Learning and Living. I'm Heather. Today, I'm going to take you along as I process a bunch of apples that I picked from my parents' tree. This tree was special to me because it was planted when I was about three years old and it was just a little tiny twig. And then my kids were able to be climbing up in that tree to pick apples. We're going to make an apple crisp that I've made for many years. And every time I make it, everybody asks for the recipe. So let's get started. So I have a apple core slicer peeler and it's been around, I think I've had this one for about 15 years and it works just by a hand crank and it makes peeling and slicing the apples super quick and easy, especially when you're doing a bunch at a time. And so we're just gonna spin through some apples and for this apple crisp recipe, we need about 10 cups of apples. And so it is going to take a little bit to get through the apples, but this will give us enough for an apple crisp now. And then I'm also going to stick the other half in the freezer and we'll be able to have an apple crisp on a night where it's super fast when somebody's like, I really want something sweet, need some kind of dessert, but I don't have time to make it. So I'll... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I might need to move the bowl. Okay, we're gonna move him over there. All right, so this is great because I'll just stick one in the freezer and then have one uh, that I can warm up on a night when somebody wants a quick dessert and all I have to do is just stick it into the oven for about 45 minutes or an hour. One trick I do have for using this is you want to put your apple on on the blossom end onto the core otherwise your core is not going to be centered. So if you stick it on on the blossom end, that will ensure that you're gonna be centered on your core. <laughs> okay, so I have about 10 cups of apples, possibly a little bit more here, all sliced and peeled. And now, of course, if you don't have an apple slicer, you can just do this by hand using a peeler and then slice up your apples. So now that these ones, it kind of turns it into a, like an accordion. So I'm going to cut those down a little so that we end up with about a third. And then this gives me the opportunity to grab out anything in case it missed a little bit of the core. And I'm going to drop it into my bowl here and continue on. Like I said, on the big apples, I'll slice them down into about a third. Any little bit of peel on it, I'm not concerned with for this recipe. Uh, it doesn't really make a big difference. And then the smaller apples will probably just be in about half. All right, so we have the apples all diced up and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this mess a little to send all the apple cores and the peels down to my parents for the chickens to eat and enjoy. And then we're gonna start adding in the couple ingredients that go into our apples and get it dumped into the pan. So right now, while we do that, I'm gonna go preheat the oven to 350 degrees so it's ready and waiting for us. What we're going to need is about a quarter cup of lemon juice and it just helps to bring out a little bit of the apple's flavor. 
These apples are a Granny Smith apple, but you can use any baking apple that you like. All right, and just using my fingers to kind of catch any seeds. All right, and we're done with the cutting board. So let's move this. All right, so uh, we're just gonna toss everything together. And so we have the apples and the lemon juice in here right now. We're gonna add in about three quarters of a cup of just regular white granulated sugar. And I just have a one cup measure because this isn't baking where anything's gonna rise. I just kind of eyeball it. And then we're gonna need about a teaspoon of cinnamon. I think we're gonna do a teaspoon and a half on this guy. And if you just wanna shake it in, you can do that. Like I said, it's you don't have to be exact in your measurements. And nothing smells more like fall than cinnamon and nutmeg, of course, in my opinion. So I have some whole nutmeg here. The whole gives you the best flavor. And I just use my little microplane to grate it in. And I'll probably grate in about half of this, which is equal to about half a teaspoon if you're using already grated. Okay. At this point, you can call it good, or if you want, you could add in some cranberries or I've even added in blackberries when I had a bunch of blackberries. So today I have some dried cranberries that I'm gonna throw in there. And that kind of gives it some extra color and a nice little pop of flavor to break up the apple. But like I said, you could be done at this point also and just stick it into your pans and then we'll make the crumble topping. All right, so I'm gonna add in about three quarters of a cup of dried cranberries. Again, eh, let's throw in a couple more. So today it looks like more than about a cup. And this recipe is great for parties because it makes a bunch or even potlucks. It's also fantastic because you can make it gluten-free um, by just using a gluten-free flour mix in the crumble topping and then gluten-free oats. That looks great. Okay, so I have two pans. One pan that I'm gonna use that's just a foil pan that I'll stick into the freezer and then the other one that will bake off now. So I like to use just a little bit of cooking spray just to ensure it's not gonna stick. All right, call that good. And then we're just gonna start dumping in the apples. Okay, perfect. Looks great. So now to save a little bit of time and energy in washing dishes, I'm just gonna use the bowl that we put all the apples in and use that to make our crumble topping, okay? So we have three sticks of butter and then we're gonna use some regular all-purpose white flour. For that, we're gonna need about a cup and a half, excuse me, two and a half cups. One. All that two and a half, okay. Two and a half cups of brown sugar. Like I said, this is enough to feed a good size party, or in this, you could split it into a couple crisps, sticking them in the freezer. We'll still have lots here. All right, and then we have some rolled oats and we're gonna do about three cups of rolled oats. Okay, 
We're going to do a whole tablespoon of cinnamon. I'm going to do a whole nutmeg again. This ensures that our crumble topping has lots of flavor. Okay. And then need a little bit of salt to bring out the flavor and everything. So we'll do about a teaspoon of salt. All right, now it's just mix everything up. And I have done this with melted butter. So in case you don't have butter that's already softened, ready to go, you can melt the butter and it worked perfectly fine. And so you're just looking to incorporate all the ingredients together and it becomes a crumble. And if you want, you can get your hands in there and speed things up a little. All right, so everything's looking well combined. I don't have any more dry spots of the flour. And we have a good mix of some chunky parts and some loose. And then all we're gonna do is just dump that on top of our apples. And then we're gonna get the one in the oven and then the other one I'm gonna seal up to be able to put in the freezer. Okay, I'm gonna work it down just a little into our apples. That way my husband gets plenty of his crumble topping. I think he would probably just eat the crumble all on its own without the apples. So I'm gonna stick this one into the oven and it's gonna cook for about 45 minutes in a 350 degree oven. And then we'll check it out in just a little bit. Okay, and then for this one, I'm gonna take and put its little foil lid that it came with on it. I like to put it with the shiny side down. That way I can write right on the paper exactly what it is and what the date is. So there's no mysteries in the freezer. And then I'll stick this whole thing into a two gallon zip top bag, probably in about a month and a half. When everybody's feeling like some apple crisp again, we will pull it out. And I just write the month and the year. I'm not too concerned with the actual day. All right. And then I have a behemoth zip top bag here and I'll just stick it in. And you just want to make sure to Try to get out as much of the air as possible. If it's not thawed, then it'll take probably an hour to an hour and a half. If it is already thawed, then all you have to do is remove that top and stick it in the oven for about the 40, 45 minutes. All right, so I hope you enjoy this apple crisp recipe. Like I said, every time that I make it, the recipe is requested. And so I try to keep a couple copies on hand. It's fantastic for parties because it doesn't need to be served hot. It can be served room temperature or warm out of the oven. And like I said, it's great because you can also make it gluten free. So it doesn't change the flavor at all. It's been fantastic gluten free or just a standard regular way. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And I'll see you next time. And it just goes right through. Oh, we have a man down looks like a core <laughs> decided to break on us don't forget to like and subscribe so you do blah, 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 blah. i'm gonna put him off to the side so we can use him later and i need a bowl <laughs>